Hello, Kyle Dark Force Zeos here. Today I've got another amazing build that I did for you guys today. It's not it's not my other builds like I did before where it was just freaking awesome. This is actually a Deca Core nuclear reactor. Enough EU to pretty much destroy everything. I basically could power just about anything I wanted without any real repercussions. If I could fly, which I'm lagging so hard. Here, I'm gonna have to turn down my it's all the ice that's moving around in the redstone that I've been using. Um, it's causing me to lag, so I'm just going to set my render distance down. I also built something else I want to show you guys, but just kind of give you a good look at this, a bird's eye view if I could fly. Here, just a minute. Okay, so you notice it's my other reactor tutorial that it was, it's based on the same design, but instead it's built um, completely out of... 10 cores and they are all linked to the same power system and that power system also runs this force field and that force field and powers all of these MS or MFSUs which are basically like fancy batteries oops well that's fine um so here's the core that actually will not run out of power no matter what I do as long as that reactor is running and so yeah this is the nuclear reactor that I built it's pretty dang cool and I've backed up the world like a bunch of times so if I happen to like blow it up or something, then I'd be safe. But the reactors are completely stable. No matter what you do, as long as you're not an idiot with what you do, the reactors will not explode. And I also have levers to shut them off if they go off. But if you notice, this is how it's set up. It's arranged differently than most. Because if I try to take these out, I could end up overloading the reactor and blowing it up. And that's not a pretty sight. Especially since you've got ten of them lined up against each other. That's why I put the field here, just in case it did go up and didn't demolish everything around it. This black cable is a uh, four times insulated high voltage cable that runs to a power transformer yeah, right there, power transformer over here, right here that powers all of these MS, uh, MFSUs, which also powers the force power uh, injector and the force field core, which in turn powers the tube force field projector, which projects this brick colored force field, and the... MFFS force field projector over here that projects this gigantic um, wooden or basically library which is supposed to represent knowledge so I also experimented a little bit more with nukes not nuclear reactors but nukes themselves and built this and inside of here was like an obsidian thing and I blew up a nuke underneath it and it blew up the obsidian which was kind of cool so that's not all though I also built this nuclear cannon called I, I call it the layer cake because it's built with three layers of TNT and I haven't loaded it yet because I'm afraid that if I set it off I could end up destroying the worlds. But if you notice this big old fat crater here was from this cannon here after firing it like six or seven times. This cannon I've had to rebuild it like four times from failed missions and stuff and I'm surprised this pig is still here because this whole place is irradiated. But so yeah it's it's a TNT cannon or a nuke cannon basically. Instead of being TNT ammo, it's a nuke, and the thing that powers it is just normal TNT. Do not try to set it off with um, industrial TNT, and I will show you why. If you take this, and I'm going to move it over here, but if you took this and you put it down and you punch it, it goes off. So there's no way to actually get rid of it. And it also will not, It's uh, I believe it's also just as powerful as normal TNT, except for this will has a larger radius and also won't destroy any items. That's the whole thing about industrial TNT. Um, otherwise, if you try to load it up with industrial TNT, the nuke will go off right on the front of the cannon. You better start booking it because you're going to end up dead if you don't. But So here we go. I'm going to push the button. We're going to show you what I mean. So let's get flying. Well, normally the oh yeah, the top shelf got blown up when um, the nuke went off too close to the... Uh, where, there it is, the missing wire. I needed the missing wire because the top shelf got blown up when the reactor went up. Or not the reactor, but when the nuke can went off, it can't went off too close. And it blew up all of the... Well, that's new. I thought that nuke was far enough away. Well, otherwise... There was one time the nuke went off on the cannon and it didn't blow up anything, but if you notice, it's like a little, if you look at my mini-map up in the corner here, it's like a little wing kind of shot off on the side because the nuke was leaned off to the side. So, I'm not going to bother trying to rebuild that. 
because now it's just a shell of what it was, but otherwise I'll just show you the raw range pretty much of what the cannon can do. So this is the radius up here, but I think it's about here is about where the furthest I've gotten it to go. And if you notice on my render distance, you can't see, but the cannon is about 155 or 140 something meters away from this area. So you can cover a very good distance with this TNT cannon, and it also has a great radius, so you could pretty much demolish enemy ranks and stuff with these cannons. Also, if you're on like a a server for Tech It Classic and stuff, you could make one of these and use it to blow up a enemy's base, and you could be really far away and still hit them. You just have to, ha first of all, this doesn't shoot upward that well. It only shoots straight and downward. It never shoots upward all that great. So in order to play it strategically, you kind of have to, um, you have to be smart about how you do things. So let me grab another, let me grab a, yeah, there we go. This will work. I need to grab that, and then I should have everything I need. Uh, yeah, I'm going to grab some grass or maybe some more bedrock just in case. All right. So I'm going to rebuild the cannon and show you what I mean by range. I should have covered the cannon's bottom with um, bedrock so it wouldn't go off. But this will be fine. Also, if you set off a nuke with an industrial industrial thing, it won't destroy redstone stuff for some odd reason. Like when the, the nuke went off on the front of the cannon, it didn't destroy anything on the cannon. It just destroyed stuff next to it. So like I don't know why that was, but... You know, I guess that's just an interesting little detail to remember. Oh, son of a biscuit eater. All right, just a minute. All right, I'm going to have to go around because it's being a pain in the butt to build again. Because this, this this one actually wasn't that hard to design. I've designed or TNT cannons before. I've just never gone nuclear with them. Only because I figured it would be a bad idea to try and build something that destructive. You know, because I didn't want it to be... I mean, I like TNT cannons, honestly. They're so much fun. You know? It's just that I didn't want to build something that was so powerful that it was going to be, you know, something that could be dangerous. But I wanted to use nukes as the ammunition, but I, that, well, the nukes kind of put an end to that real quick. Come on, place it. Ah! Okay. Get rid of that. Okay. This is not working. If I could just cover the bottom with bedrock, it would be so much easier. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So I'm just trying to get the source block covered up again. Once that happens, it'll stop flowing outward and it won't be as much of a pain in the butt. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to be working with uh, another YouTuber. You should check out his channel. His name is um, Aris Fetterman, Fetterman, and he does his own YouTube channel by the name of AFED. And it's actually pretty cool. I've seen it. It's fairly good. Maybe I should try getting rid of the source block. That would make it so much easier. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of the freaking source block. All right. So, you know, if I could just figure out... Where did I put the source block? There it is. Okay. Boop. That should get rid of all that water. Shouldn't be much of a problem anymore. Okay. Now I can see where the problem was. And so I gotta grab more water. Just give me a minute. I'm sorry. I am taking forever. One time I built a TNT cannon in the, um, in a, a Taiga biome. And I wasn't paying attention. And the water froze. So I had to put glowstone on the, the front end of the cannon. But I forgot before I placed it that the water had froze. So I ended up setting off the cannon. And the water was what keeps the TNT from going off, went off, or didn't, you know, didn't, well, it was frozen, so it didn't actually stop the TNT from destroying everything. So I thought it was really funny because I ended up blowing myself up because I was building it on survival. So I'm sorry, my sisters are screaming in the background, and that could be a problem, and I, I apologize for the background noise. So if we can get back to building this cannon, I guess you guys are getting a, a um, tutorial all on your own, huh? Recommendation, if you're going to fire this cannon, you build, or if you're going to build a cannon, build it somewhere high up. So, like, build a little tower for it, because otherwise it's not going to go that far. And if you really want to hit somebody, you better dang well know where you're aiming and the distance of the cannon, because this cannon is not calibratable. I was just building a cannon for fun. I am okay at redstone. I am not amazing with redstone.
I'm more of an industrial craft person when it comes to that stuff. And even then, I'm not that great. I'm kind of like a jack of all trades when it comes to Minecraft. I'm a little, I'm kind of good at PvP. I'm kind of good at redstone. I'm kind of good at building. I'm kind of good at everything. So it's just kind of something I learn really fast. And the faster I learn, the, you know, the less skilled I'm actually going to be at it. So I pick up skills quickly and I use them quickly. That's kind of my thing. So I'm almost done loading up the redstone and stuff, which is like the longest part of building one of these cannons is just getting the redstone to work. Because once you have the redstone working, it will pretty much always fire, unless you're stupid and you accidentally set off the TNT without paying attention, because that, that has happened before to me, and I've done it before when I was building my cannon. I accidentally built a loop that I shouldn't have. Like if you place this here, that redstone on the bottom will wire up to this sometimes and it will cause uh, a loop that permanently keeps the um, circuit lit kind of like a redstone torch so you kind of have to think about what you're going to do because otherwise you could end up setting off a loop and then when you try to load it again you're not going to be paying attention and the TNT will go off as you're loading it and you can end up killing yourself so you got to be very careful about how you build this first of all first thing about being careful is that the TNT is not something you mess with. You don't mess with TNT unless you know what you're doing. Because you're a freaking idiot if you don't. Because this, as you can see, this would have killed me. This industrial TNT, if I was in survival and not wearing any armor, or even a little bit of armor, like um, diamond or iron, which is not that great in tech it, um, just industrial TNT can kill you in one hit. Any TNT can kill you in one hit, no matter what you're wearing. Unless you're wearing quantum armor, you're pretty much as vulnerable as it gets. One second. Er, sorry about that, I had to turn my mic off. Um, so, as you see, I'm kind of building up the, the cannon systems. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that the front end of the cannon isn't built the same. Because of way it, the way it's built is, uh, first of all, you have to put these borders on there. And I don't want to put a border on the front end because when I set off the cannon, I want the nuke to go as far as possible. Because if I put something on top of the nuke when it goes off, then what's going to happen is the nuke is going to go like three inches and then explode. And that can be a huge problem when you're building a cannon because um, that can blow up your cannon and you. Because a nuke is a huge, 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 huge explosion. That and if you set off a nuke, you have to be dang well ready to start running because nukes have a very long fuse. But they also have a very large uh, blast radius, so you kind of have to pay attention to how you're setting off your weapons, you know? And also, nukes are hard to make, so, and I only, this isn't not a, a logical design, it's just something for fun. So, I built this so that people could, like, experiment with it and, like, build little houses and blow them up with nuke cannons. Or, if they're on a Tekkit Classic server and their opponent's got this amazing obsidian fortress that you just can't get into because they're stupid rules against it in the server and what you could do is you could just blow down the walls <laughs> with the nuke cannon because the nukes I believe will break obsidian uh, the only thing it won't break is bedrock and reinforced stone after three layers which a lot of people in Tekkit prefer reinforced stone but in Tekkit you can break reinforced stone a heck of a lot easier than you can any other um, thing one second I apologize. Um, so the next thing you need to do, oops, oh, I almost clicked something else. The next thing it, stop making two blocks, I only want one. So the next thing you need to do is once you build all your borders, you gotta load the cannon, which isn't all that hard to do. Once you've got it loaded up, it'll be actually one of the easiest things to do is just press the button and it will go off in an amazing fashion. Um, I would show you what happens if you do use industrial TNT, but I'm afraid it's going to end up hitting my fancy floor over here, my fancy dance floor, which I really like. So, um, let's load them up and let's blow it up. Okay. Uh, one second. All right, let's go. So, I know it takes a while to load. I know it took a while to build, but once it's built, it's pretty dang awesome to see it go off. So, if I could just... Gosh. Here we go. All right. Place. Place. Go down. Wait, I don't want to go that far down, but I might as well load this shelf too. Okay, first thing you want to know is you're going to want to keep your water source block protected. If you accidentally place a piece of TNT in your source block, 
then when it goes off, there will be no source block or water to keep the TNT from damaging any of your cannon components or, in fact, yourself. So, first thing you're going to want to know is you've got to make sure that you're not going to accidentally place PS TNT in your block. I normally like to place a block above it to tell me that there is water there and I should not place a block there. Um, other thing you should know, make sure you have no blocks blocking your TNT from falling down because you want it all to fall into the same thing because it's an entity and that's what you want and it blew up my sign. Anyway, so next what you're going to want is you're going to want a button or a lever, either one. I like button preferred, but we'll do lever because it's, oop, not leer. That's a Pokemon move. Um, yes, I'm a fan of Pokemon. Anyway, so nine will press this button. Okay, place the lever. Three, two, one. Habushki. All right. As you can see, all the TNT fell into the same layer. The nuke got lit, and it's going to go way out here. And then when it goes off, it should, it won't create a very big explosion, but I'll stand next to it to show you how make, as far it makes you fly. I'll stand right on it. Here, right here. Let's go flying. Up to the sky. Okay. Notice how far you went in the air. Just think about that as raw force. Like, you'd be dead. You'd be dead when the thing hit. Um, did you notice? The whole thing is safe other than the front end and all of the redstone circuitry because that's how large these explosions are. Um, so that's the cannon. It should have shot farther than that. That's the one thing I'm going to say because it should have shot a heck of a lot farther than that. But so that's the cannon and that's the reactor over here. And I am very happy because I built both of these things in my own time and I think they're pretty freaking cool. So if you guys like this, then go ahead and hit that like and that subscribe button down there. I'm sure you'll love it. Anyway, this is Kyle Dark Force Theos, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching, and to have a nice day. Oh, by the way, uh, Merry Christmas. This is my 50 subscriber special. I got 50 subscribers. Woo. Um, so yeah, I got 50 subscribers, so this is what I've been doing, is I built this whole reactor for you guys to kind of show you um, what a Deca Core reactor looks like, and it looks pretty dang awesome. It looks like, well, it looks like mechanics. Um... So I'm glad you guys are watching if you guys are watching and I want you guys to hit that subscribe button for real seriously because I want the next goal is 100 and I would love to reach that especially before New Year's that would be amazing. So if you guys like this video hit the like and subscribe button thank you guys for watching yeah, this is Kyle Dark for Seals and I am signing off um, right about actually I'm not going to do that. So thank you guys for watching have a nice day.